Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everybody. Today we're talking about the Keystone 8 8 millimeter movie camera. It's really a, a terrific little camera and they're, they're easy to find and they're very inexpensive. This camera takes no batteries whatsoever. It's a spring wound motor. On this side of your camera, you have your wind, you have your footage counter. You would set this footage counter to S when you're starting your roll of film. This camera takes standard eight millimeter film, also known as double eight film. On the front of your camera is your shutter button to start your camera and your lens. Now, different models of this camera will, may have different types of lenses. The most common is a fixed focus lens. You do have to set your f-stops, your aperture, manually, and your choices are anywhere from f3.5, that's open aperture, open wide, to f16. Here's your eyepiece. You would be looking through the back of your camera. You're not actually looking through your lens in this camera. You're looking through this little eyepiece. On the back of this particular model, you have your frame rate, frames per second that the film is running through the camera. The normal is 16 frames per second, and you have other choices, 12 or 48. Because of the age of this camera and other models like it, I highly recommend just shooting at 16 frames per second. Because the motor and the springs and everything inside are so old, if you start messing with this, it could break. Bottom of your camera, this is your handy strap. This comes off. This is your tripod socket, should you want to use a tripod. This side of your camera, this is your, your film compartment. You open this to load your film. So this film, as I mentioned, takes what's known as double eight film. Double eight film is 16 millimeter in width, and you cannot use standard 16 millimeter film in this camera because the sprocket system is totally different on double eight film. You put this tiny 25 foot roll of film into your camera and you will shoot both sides of it. You will shoot side one and it'll put a series of images on the left side here. And then when you complete that, that side of the roll, you will open up your camera, flip the film, and then you will shoot the other side. So you will wind up, once developed, two sets of eight millimeter images side by side, which in the lab is slit to give you 50 feet of eight millimeter film, which is about four minutes worth of footage. Uh, I would like to note that film is light sensitive, so it needs to be loaded in dim light. Also, you do need to get your film developed and scanned. To load, your camera should come with a take-up spool. Very important, if you don't if you don't have a take-up spool, you can purchase one at the Film Photography Project. This particular camera is fairly easy to load. First thing you should know about your camera is this is your film gate. In order to load, you have to open it. What you have here is your film gate, and then this metal piece is known as your pressure plate. Pressure. And that keeps your film firmly pressed in the gate so you get awesome images. The shiny side of your film, that's your film base. The dull is known as the film emulsion. That's the light sensitive side. The light sensitive side of your film always has to face outward towards your lens. This is just a test roll, by the way, just a little itty bitty test roll. Take your take up spool, you roll this light as such on here. Take your time doing this, do it in dim light. Don't get the film sweats, especially if it's the first time loading. Okay, so here we go. In your camera, you will notice there are guides, there are actual arrows showing you your film path. As a matter of fact, I loaded this camera, shot a roll, and I loaded it without following the arrow guides, and my footage was all like, tuk, 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 tuk. I, I was blaming the camera when in fact I loaded it incorrectly. Your film will go on this post, around this guide, through the gate, follow the arrows, follow the arrows through, through this guide, and then onto your take up. So let's do that. Around through the gate, gate has to be open, around this other, it's a little tricky. So, you know, first time doing it, a little tricky, don't sweat it, around this post, and then onto this take up. Now, it only goes on one way, so you won't mess up. There we go. Okay, great, so here we go. You have to make sure, very important, that your film is placed properly 
in the film gate. Did you hear that snap in? Yes. It snapped in. So I'm going to close the film gate. I'm very confident this is loaded properly. The film coming off the spool, around this post, around this guide, through the gate, around this guide, onto your take-up spool. Now, this is just a little test roll, so that's why you see, like, some extra film hanging over, because there's very little film on this roll. Let's see if this is working properly. That is correct. Now, this, our film isn't spinning because it's a test roll, and there's only a little bit of film on this particular roll, so don't sweat it. It's rolling right. You will then close up your film camera. Very important not to open this compartment while you're shooting your movie to check on your film because every time you open it up you will completely flash your film with light and you will ruin part or maybe all of your roll. Wind up your camera and shoot your first side of the film. You may be asking, how do I set the f-stop on my camera to properly expose your film? I've never followed this guide. This particular camera, this particular model, says Brilliant sun Sunlight F16. That is actually correct. Many cameras have guides that were geared up towards much lower ISO film. So the proper film to shoot in this camera would be ISO 40. That's the lowest current ISO film available from the Film Photography Project. It's available in color. It's available in black and white. So if you're shooting in broad daylight, you will need to put your f-stop to f 16. What you need to know if using a light meter app or a handheld light meter is that at 16 frames per second, your camera has a set shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. Your film ISO will not change. If it's 40 ISO film you're shooting, it will remain for the entire roll of film. If you don't have a light meter, shoot in sunlight. Make sure your f-stop is all the way at f16. I don't recommend shooting indoor at all with a camera like this if you're not experienced with indoor lighting or using a light meter app. So you shot your first side of your film. What to do? Well, you're not done yet. You need to shoot the other side. When you're confident you have, you have shot the entire first side based upon your... Footage counter. Yes, thank you, John. Footage counter. You open up your film compartment and you will open up your gate you will take your film, your take-up spool, you will flip it, you will take your, what was your feed side, you will flip it to side two, and you will do the exact same thing, and we're going to do that right now. Okay, so with the side two, it's the same as side one. Shiny side, that's your base. Dull side, emulsion, always faces the lens. You put your film around the first guide, it's a little tricky, but you'll get it. Put your film on the post, around this guide, around that post. Be gentle, try not to break the film. Very important, seat the film in the film gate. Close the pressure plate. Pressure. And now your side two is ready to go. Close up the film compartment, very important. Reset your counter to S. S. And then you will shoot side two. And then when you're done shooting, you will open your film compartment. Take your film out. Your film is now back on the original roll. It was on when you started. Complete. Put this in its black bag or tin that it came with. And hopefully send it to the Film Photography Project for developing scanning. This is a great little camera. It's inexpensive. They're easy to find on ebay.com. It's small. You could practically put it in your pocket. Great for a day trip. If you would like to contact us, Michael at filmphotographyproject.com or leave your comment down below. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. And Marie, too.